First, let's define what is a cell membrane. The cell or plasma membrane is a semi-permeable membrane that surrounds the cell. Its main function is to protect the cell from its external environment. Its other functions are for the regulation of the entry and exit of specific substances within the cell, for fusing with another cells, for signal transduction, and for cell identification. The main components of the cell membrane are lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. There are two types of lipids, the phospholipids and cholesterol. The phospholipids make up the entire body of the cell membrane and provide as a barrier as well as a pathway for small molecules to cross the membrane. They are arranged in a bilayer form where in their heads, which are hydrophilic or water-loving, faces outwards, while their hydrophobic tails, which hate water, face each other in the middle of the bilayer. Meanwhile, the bilayer also consists of cholesterols. It contributes to the flexibility of the membrane and prevents the phospholipids from separating too far from each other or from compressing too much with the other phospholipids. For the phospholipids, we're gonna use the cardboard, scratch paper, and paste. First, I'm gonna show you my paste. This is actually a sort of starch powder I bought at the market. You just need to dilute it in water to form the paste. Two sachets are actually already enough for the whole 3D model. So for the phospholipids heads, just form tiny spheres using the scratch papers and paste. For its tails, use a thin cardboard. It's better to paint it already rather than coloring it after it's cut. Have a piece with a height depending on your model's height. Just fold the cardboard horizontally to form waves. Fold it into half and then cut it into strips. And we have the tails. We'll add it later. Taking the cholesterols, we we'll draw it straight on the painted cardboard and cut. Carbohydrates are always found on the exterior surface of cells and are bound either to proteins forming glycoproteins or to lipids forming glycolipids. These carbohydrates receive chemical messages from other cells and they also function for cell to cell recognition. Just like what we've done with the cholesterols, just draw the carbohydrates on the painted cardboard and cut! Remember that they can be either straight or branched, just like the reference. There are two types of proteins embedded in the phospholipid bilayer, the integral and peripheral proteins. The integral proteins span from one side of the bilayer to the other, while the peripheral proteins just sit on one of the surfaces or even attach the integral proteins. Transport or channel proteins facilitates what molecules enter and exit the cell. It has two types. The non-gated channel protein stays open all the time, allowing ions and water to flow through the cell. On the other hand, a gated channel protein remains closed until it receives a special chemical or electrical signal to open. So we need to use a thick cardboard here. Cut a piece of it depending on the height of the model that you make. Form a tube and seal the sides with a masking tape. Make sure to leave a hole in it. Now, we'll cover it with scotch paper and paste to give it a form. For the non-gated channel protein, make the hole visible. Meanwhile, for the gated channel protein, just do the same steps, but this time, cover the hole and leave a shallow crater on it. Membrane receptors provide extracellular attachment sites for effectors like hormones and growth factors which then trigger intracellular responses. In other words, they transmit signals through the bilayer. Like what we did with the channel proteins, we need the cardboard tube, but this time, we'll fully cover the hole. Using the scotch paper and glue, I'm gonna give it a bone-like shape. But still, you can copy your reference or whatever you want. Marker proteins allow cells to recognize one another. They have carbohydrates in them and extend across the cell membrane and serve to identify the cell, thus also called as glycoprotein. The immune system uses these proteins to identify friendly cells from foreign cell invaders. We still need the tube here and just like the receptor protein, let's create its form using the scratch papers and paste. Just make sure that it don't have the same shape with the previous proteins, and also it must not have holes. After painting it, we'll add the carbohydrates on top of it. Peripheral proteins can have an assortment of functions such as acting as enzymes to speed up reactions, or they can also attach to the cytoskeleton structures to help with cell shape. Using the scratch paper and glue, we just have to create small blobs or lumps. And that's it!
Before we arrange all the membrane components, we need a structure. Let's use the steel wire for that or a netted one. If you don't have this, you can look for other alternatives, but this is really easier to use since you can fully bend it into any shape that you want. So I have created two rectangles out of my netted wires and I'm gonna bend it just to create some form. Next, we're gonna connect these two with the steel wires. Its height must be also be according to the model that we'll make. And we're done.